Do you hate hauling home those buckets of water from the grocery store? Me too. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now we've all been there. When we first start the hobby, you're hauling around those five gallon barrels of water from the grocery store to do water changes, to fill up your auto top off. And after a few months, you realize that gets old pretty fast and you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna get an RODI unit. So today I'm going to talk about RODI units, what's the benefit of, why we'd want one, some of the maintenance on it, and a few other things like that. But first, but first, but wait, I want to give a quick shout out to Will Santiago Reefing for subscribing and hitting that bell. He let me know in the comments below and I appreciate hearing that. It really makes me happy and with the new YouTube algorithm, hitting that bell makes a big difference. Make sure you guys don't miss any videos. So if you guys want your own shout out, Make sure you guys hit that bell and let me know in the comments. So what is an RODI unit? Why do you want one? Who wants it? Why are you gonna spend money on this? Well, first of all, hauling buckets of water sucks. It gets old quick and have, you know, make your own purified water at home. It's gonna save you a huge headache and make the hobby much more enjoyable. Now, lots of people use tap water and the problem with that is you don't know what you're adding to your tank. There could be tons of particles. There's lots of TDS and that could be causing algae in your tank and tons of other issues. Using RODI from the beginning is really just going to prevent that. So how does it work? Reverse osmosis forces water through a membrane which filters out all those little particles. So usually once it goes through the membrane you're going to get three or four TDS out of it. Uh, the next step is we run it through a DI cartridge and with that deionizing resin does we'll strip out any last TDS so your product water is going to be zero TDS. Now, one question I get a lot is how do you know when to change your membrane? How often do you gotta change the filters? This comes up quite a bit. So one of the easiest ways, um, on most systems, I'd say, get in there. So it starts out, we have your pre-filter, and this is the one that gets hit first. It does most of the work. Um, they say change it about every six months. I change mine every four to six months. Next, you have your carbon filter. Uh, now, you can get up to about a year out of these. As a kind of rule of thumb, I just change it every second sediment filter change. So your water first comes in from the tap. So I got a little wire that goes to the sink on the other side of the wall. It comes into here, it goes through the sediment filter, and then it, it comes out, it goes into the carbon filter. Now from the carbon, it goes into the membrane. Now I have a dual system, so mine's a little bit different, but so it goes out of the carbon into the membrane, and out of the membrane, it goes into the next filter, or the wastewater goes into the next filter and that goes down the drain. So, but most systems, the single membrane, it goes through your DI membrane, and this will give you a product water of a couple TDS, and then you run it through deionizing resin, which will strip it down to zero TDS. Now, one thing I do advise as another way to kind of tell when to replace your membranes is getting these inline TDS meters. I believe they're around 25 to $30. I have two of them on here. Uh, they're great because you can test how your system performing at each step along the process. So if I turn this on, you'll see my tap water is going to start out fairly high. So I turn on the water flow and see we're around 48, 49, so that's actually pretty good. It's normally higher than that. So I have 49 TDS from my tap water source. Now if I flick to the output, you're going to see it's currently 28. So this shows how much TDS is coming out after the membrane. And one way to look at this is called TDS creep. So once your membrane has been sitting for a while, or if you're only doing little mini fills, this TDS will slowly creep up. So what I do is I flush the membrane for about 30 seconds to a minute to get this to come down to zero. And I do this before it goes through my DI resin. So a few more seconds. Now, how did I do this? Okay, I teed off the water line before the DI resin. And with that, I have a little valve here, and this lets me to flush it. So it's taking the water after the membrane before it hits the TDI, and it can just flush it down the drain into a bucket, whatever you want to do with it. So once it gets to around two or three TDS, that's when I know I'm safe to shut it off and use my product water. Now the next valve over, up here, um, this goes to fill my brute container. So if I turn this one on, you'll be able to hear the water trickling down. There you go. So now we can see water coming out of the float valve and it's going to top off my brute container. 
Um, it's always a good idea to use a float valve. Um, I've learned my lesson in the past where you forgot about it, you go to bed, you wake up, and there's water all over the place. It's a, not a fun experience, so definitely recommend getting a float valve. Now, the other kind of couple questions I hear asked is, how do you know when to replace your membrane? Now, membranes can last anywhere from two years, I've heard up to five years, but two years is a good average lifespan. If you have a small nano tank, you probably get much longer out of it. Now, the one good way to know is if you look at your pressure gauge, when I turn it off, see, we're getting probably about a little over 70 PSI. While it's running, it's a little over 40. Now, if I see it's in the green, so it's still happy, but if I see it drop into the yellow, I'll know that I'm not getting full pressure to this. So the first things I would do is change my sediment filter and my carbon filter, mainly the sediment, because that's the main one clogging it. If my pressure is still really low, then that could mean my membrane is getting clogged and needs to be replaced. So having a pressure gauge on your membrane is the best way to know for sure. Now, after that, I have my second TDS meter. So this is telling me what TDS is coming out of the DI canister. So my very first one is giving me one TDS. So that's almost making me question if I should be replacing it. Now, if I swap it to the out, this is what's coming out after my second DI resin. Now this should be zero and I'm getting one. So this is telling me that my resins are probably exhausted or then they should be replaced fairly soon. These are, I think one of them is the original one, one I've changed. So I, I got dual ones on here. Most people only use one, but. So I'm getting one TDS out, so it's probably time to change these. If I see it creep up to two, then I'll for sure change it. Now, another great accessory that you guys can do is adding on a flush valve. So what this does, normally you have your output over here goes to, straight to the drain and the flush valve is a bypass. So you'll see there's two tubes here. One tube has the general flow restrictor and this one will open the valve and let water bypass the flow restrictor. So you're letting the full pressure flush out the membrane. And what that's gonna do is help prolong the life of your membrane by flushing out all the extra bit of particles and stuff that builds up inside. So you'll get more life out of it by flushing it once in a while. Uh, I try and flush it for about 30 seconds before and after it doesn't always happen, but it's a good idea. So that's down to zero. Um, so I like having two meters so I can see my source water, water after the membrane, before DI and after DI. So, cause I have two stages, so you probably don't need two, but I'd recommend getting at least one so you can see your source water and your output water. It's gonna help you know when to replace your resin, when your filters are going bad, that type of stuff. So they're a great way, great little add-on. Um, I'll drop a link below if you guys want to pick up one. Now, the other half of me not hauling buckets is that middle valve with the clear hose actually hooks up to, I have a nice 50, 60 foot hose of DI line. Um, so what this is going to do is allow me to take my product water output and connect it right up to my auto top off reservoir so I don't have to carry a bucket. So when my auto top off needs filling, I just walk my hose over, plug it into the top of the auto top off bin and turn it on. Now this port actually has a float valve inside of it so I don't have to worry about overflowing if I'm working, doing something else, I can just let it run and I know when I come back later. There'll be no floods and my auto top off will be full. So we all know that day is gonna come when you get tired of filling up buckets and are gonna invest in your own RODI system. If you have anything bigger than a nano, I would strongly advise it as it makes your life so much easier. Now if you guys have any questions about it, as always, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, hit that like button. And otherwise, make sure you guys subscribe and hit that bell to stay up to date for more great videos from Reef Dudes. And hey, if you're not subscribed yet, click that button. Or check out that video right over there. Cheers, guys.